Good evening. Welcome to Neighborhood News. I'm John Solvia. Um, it's Tuesday night, and uh, Carlos is joining me this week. We had a couple weeks where you were on your uh, own doing some things around the city, yes, right? Yes. Um, matter of fact, it was uh, my neighborhood uh, yep, meeting. association meeting um, the same day, so that's why. So that was more important. To have that was more important, right? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I'm but kidding. on the meantime, um, I had to. Um, <coughs> To, to run the uh, the meeting but anyway but it's Tuesday and um, and we back again for one more show of the neighborhood news um, what happen happens every week uh, we want to uh, welcome the Portuguese community sejam bem-vindos para mais um programa das suas notícias da sua vizinhança é terça-feira canal 95 7 horas da noite nós estamos de volta para falar consigo uh, e trazer-lhes mais notícias e trazer-lhes também uh, convidados. Fique conosco. And um, it's a busy week, uh, uh, has been, uh, yeah. John. Yeah, it uh, has been. I, I think that the, the spring is uh, leaving us, the summer is coming, yeah. and what, what that is, um, you know, it's All our a, activities lot of, again, right? a lot of activities yeah. for the summertime, the, the parks, the cleanups, um, Besides that, we have our um, uh, fundraisers and, and, and yep. very for the for the Flint, uh, it's a, a very busy week. Um, yep. And one week uh, we have um, th Mario is is doing a fundraiser. Uh, he's Mario is Mario is doing a fundraiser, <laughs> and he's he's throwing um, <laughs> a, a team dance yeah. Um, yeah. to fundraise for the Devolve School. Wow, um, good deal, Mario. Um, we have the on the weekend. We have the, the bike to remember. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be yep. uh, and you're going to yeah, be, be there. Yeah, we're also going to be there. Yeah. Cool. Um, then on, on the fourth, we're going to uh, give our second um, uh, scholarship uh, to Durfee. Okay. Um, the second year that we uh, provide a thousand dollar scholarship, and Kathy Assad is going to yep. be uh, okay. giving uh, okay. that. Great. scholarship that's on her name so oh, she's going to be given it that and then we're going to start on on the process of the movie nights <coughs> and and the block parties and and all of that so yeah. i'm very excited um yeah. the schools are coming into an end very soon uh we're going to be bringing 180 kids this year uh, from watson school to the walk on the trustees uh, which Great. we bring every year we bring uh, students from one school the Spirito Santo School, uh, we have a trolley ride, um, historic, uh, like we do every year to celebrate the Day of Portugal. We go on the trolley ride around the neighborhood and we talk about history, the buildings, the monuments, the homes. Oh. Um, so the kids always have a good time uh, okay. with that and it, it's our way to support the schools too. The community center, the um, the senior center, we just came with them from um, at the casino trip. And this week, they have a Portuguese soup contest. <laughs> the ladies are doing a Portuguese soup contest. So between the schools wow. and, and the senior center yeah. and all of that what, that we support is... Uh, Excellent. Um, and the whole school that we... Uh, Th that you guys you know, bought, right? That we bought. Uh, um, now we are in the face of getting all the uh, the money to start constructions yeah. same time the parks um <coughs> father travassos sh should start construction next month yeah. 2.5 million dollars um was uh, a good yeah. price yeah, that's great give us by the state to yeah. uh, to fix the uh, the park yeah. uh, we got a mini grant from the mayor's office uh to um to fix the top lot on Quickerson Street, I know your neighborhood got uh, yeah, a really We also received too. it, yeah, so it was great. Did you guys going to do yeah, something we're this month? Yeah, right? we're going to do something in the month of June, June 28th. We're trying to get it all together now. We're going to have a volunteer slash um, appreciation day. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to try to spruce up Pulaski Park, uh, pl do some plantings there, um, throw some mulch down, clean the whole area. And um, at the end, we're going to have some food for the uh, volunteers. And we're also going to be, that day, they'll be hanging on neighborhood banners mm -hmm. around the area. So it should be fun. It should be fun. Uh, it, it is a lot going on in the neighborhoods. And, and, and all this is possible because we have such great 
um, communication and, and s so many volunteers. Yeah. Every neighborhood has so many volunteers and yeah. we have so many um, uh, neighborhood groups that makes that possible. And just before um, we go um, and announce the guests, I would like to start in announcing the St. Anne's Neighborhood Association will have their movie night. Okay. Um, so you can stop pointing the, uh, the dates <laughs> the down. Calendar, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the movie nights at um, uh, July the 12th. July 11 uh, is a Friday night. Okay. And on July 12th, um, it's a Saturday night, we are going to be showing the movie at Britain Park. Cool. Um, cool. So I would like to, um, because it, usually it's a lot of people to yeah. walk for that day. Yeah. Uh, it's Great. A, usually it's a nice hot yeah, it's summer usually day. Warm in and, July, uh, you're right. and 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 Britain Park, we're going to start at one o'clock. I have uh, done all the permits. We're going to start at one o'clock. We're going to have music. We're going to have games. We're cool. going to have the moonwalk for the kids. We're cool. going to have a lot of volunteers. A lot of vendors going to be there promoting. Um, and then at night, when it gets dark, we're going to watch a movie. Cool. Cool. That's great. So it's uh, yeah. No, that's great. If sounds you, like a lot of fun this summer. We're gonna have yeah. a lot. Well, if you, if you go, uh, folks haven't caught it. Carlos spoke in front of the uh, city council the other day. I missed part of it, but I cut the last part. And um, he has a lot of things going on there. So uh, yes. get a chance to listen to him. You can write down some of the yeah, dates to it. Between <laughs> uh, um, in two months, I presented uh, to the city council yesterday twelve events yeah. Excellent. for two months. Excellent. So it's. <laughs> But you know, uh, just one quick thing before you say uh, the neighborhoods have been doing this, but these grants that are coming in that we receive, I think was due to the hard work of uh, uh, folks in the city that have actually applied mm -hmm. for these grants. Um, and I know one big grant came from um, the tree farm um, that mm -hmm. was dedicated to Mary Ann Waddell the other day, and that mm -hmm. came from a grant that the city applied for. So. Um, so with their help there, that, yes. that is helping us to move and, forward And all too. these mini grants are coming from a big grant that the city got award yeah. because we have a lot of volunteers. Yeah, yep, so exactly. So the state recognizes the city of Fall River, yep. one of the best cities for volunteers. Yeah. That's why we got that grant. Yeah. And I believe I it was 25,000. Yeah, like and, and, and you know, it's just to kind of, you know, go over that a little bit, I don't want to keep our guests uh, out of the loop here too long, but basically the, the tree planting committee got a uh, state grant for, you're right, $25,000. We were one of three cities in Massachusetts to get it. Mm -hmm. Springfield, I believe it was Chelsea and us. And that was basically, we didn't, the city didn't apply for that one actually. What happened was we were sought out because of the uh, Fall River Street Tree Planting Program and how the uh, volunteers and you know the, the president of that group, Mary Ann Wardell, has kind of put this together. Um, over the last, I think, five or 10 years, just that group has planted 500 trees in the city. Mm -hmm. The city didn't have the money for that prior to that. So that group, that nonprofit came out and really, you know, Fill the need there, so um, so it is. You're right, and, it's a cooperation and, and, between. And now all. is now, and and thank God for that grant because if you want a tree on yeah. your property, please contact. Yeah, Marianne Wardell. Um, and because I, they have trees to yeah. to uh, to give away, and and uh, I got a card. I yeah. fill up a card. So if you want a tree on your yeah. property, yeah. now is the time. Uh, because usually those trees <coughs> goes for a couple hundred yeah, dollars. Couple, yeah, there, there are at least a hundred or two. But just um, the, uh, the areas, though, there's two specific areas, because what this grant is trying to do is they're trying to pretty much build up the po tree population in, in one neighborhood, one neighborhood, and then go. They don't want to do them random because they're trying to just make sure they get that uh, canopy filled together and move on to the next neighborhood. So if you live in the Maplewood area, which is basically South, uh, Brayton Avenue south to the Tiverton uh, border, um, that area is Maplewood, and um, they, you're going to get it for free. Also, Sandy Beach area, the far south end of South Main Street, that's the other area that they're looking. So they're trying to get these all together and then move on, and maybe we'll have this huge uh, tree canopy eventually. So, but anyway. I hope so. Yep. I hope so. Very good. And um, so we could stay okay, two yeah, hours sorry just about that. talking about neighborhoods <laughs> yes, and, sorry. and events on the neighborhood. But um, I'll, like uh, like always, I give you the uh, give me the floor the floor <laughs> to um, introduce our guests. All right. Well, we uh, welcome Bob Bailey. Um, Thanks. 
Bob is uh, our guest tonight, and he's going to be talking about a new program, uh, and it's time, was it, was time? Time exchange. Time exchange, right. I think time share, sorry, because <laughs> I have a couple of them. It's an easy but, one. Uh, <laughs> it started out time banking, actually, okay. Okay. and a lot of organizations started, uh, decided that the time banking had a bit too much uh, association with money. Uh, because there's no money involved in a time exchange. So a lot of the newer time exchanges have uh, kept the name with exchange rather than banking. Um, have you ever heard of a time exchange before? No. Well, that's the question I often ask <laughs> people when I'm tabling at events. I've been to a number of the, uh, the school uh, family fun nights and uh, almost all the time someone will say, no, I don't know what that is. And so I launch right in. It's um, but before I do now, I would like to get a little audience participation. I would like to pose a question and see if the audience would think about that for a minute. My question is, the first question is, who do you call? Who do you call when you need something? Who are the people in your life that are important when you have to turn to somebody and you need something? Something happens. It could be, it probably it's easiest to think about when you have a snowstorm, you know, you're thinking about people that are uh, nearby and can help you shovel out or maybe um, uh, get some groceries in. But who do you call? Do you have a network of people that you depend on when suddenly you need something? And I think that uh, we are increasingly becoming isolated from our friends and neighbors and relations for a variety of reasons. And so the question is, how are we being isolated? How are we being cut off? And I think that um, there's a number of ways. Do you, any, do you have any thoughts offhand? Well, I think everybody's busy in their own life. I, I think as far as um, you know, your neighbors, a lot of people um, don't want to get too friendly with neighbors. Um, you know, I, I've lived in the same area for 20 years, so I know everybody that lives around me. But I think. Uh, a lot of times folks think that you're going into their business where years ago I knew all my neighbors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. so it, it, it's changed. And I think it's probably people moving around a lot too. Um, you don't get folks that stay in one area for 20 or 30 years like we did before, so. I think too that uh, <coughs> our te the technology has had a hand in it. I think we are spending a lot of time on our computers, time that we otherwise might have spent out in the backyard, uh, in the neighborhood, walking down the street, sitting on the step. Um, our cars, and this goes back 100 years, but our cars have isolated us. We no longer travel so much with other people. Uh, the mass transit is gone in most places. We're trying to bring it back, but I think we, we're, we're beginning to isolate it with that. And now phones now, I mean, you know, people walking down the street, <laughs> their head is in their phone, even if their friend is next to them, <laughs> and they're even texting each other as they walk down the street. <laughs> So, uh, and, and even our houses with air conditioning, yeah. we no longer go outside as much. We stay inside, we shut the windows, we can't hear what's going on in our own yard. I think that there are a lot of reasons why we are becoming more and more isolated and I think it's a concern. Um, so, what do you do? How do you fight isolation? Uh, the, obviously, the, the, the problem is people are getting separated, so what do you do? You try to find ways to bring people together. And that essentially, to me, is what, what drew me to the concept of the time exchange. Um, so very briefly, I'll tell you what the time exchange is, and I'll tell you a little bit about the story of how it came about. Um, a time exchange is a lot of things. I've called it a system. I've called it an organization. I've called it a, um, uh, a cooperative. I've called it a group. It's, I don't like to use any one word because it doesn't really fit, and I'll, I'll explain why. When you join the time exchange, you have the ability to give people something called time credits in exchange for work that they do for you. So for example, I cut your grass for an hour. I get an hour's worth of credit in the time exchange. I can then use that credit, that, that hour of time credit, and pay someone else in the time exchange to do something for me that I need maybe tutor my kids, give me a ride to the airport, um, cook me a meal, uh, whatever it is I need, I don't have to get it from you like it would be in barter. I can get it from somebody else. I use the time credit as, as a way of trading time. That's the simple concept. Now, 
and that's the obvious hook, oh well, yeah, I could get stuff for free. I don't have to pay for certain things, I just have to give my time. If I'm good at cleaning houses, I can do that, and instead, and then I can get someone to tutor my kids to help them with their math, because I can't help them with the math so much. Um, that's an obvious benefit. What we find when we start looking at the time exchange itself is um, the way we bring people together is f helping them find things that they need or helping them let other people know what they need and help helping them find out what other people need from them. The system is a very simple one. It's pretty much computer-based. That's the primary idea, although if someone is not computer literate, doesn't have a computer, doesn't care about computers, doesn't like computers, they can still participate in the time exchange. But the basic heart of the system is a computerized system that keeps track of everybody's accounts, keeps track of their time. So uh, when you join, you go to our website, which is uh, exchangetime.org. It's right here on the web, on the brochure, uh, exchangetime.org. It, um, you go to the website, you click on join, and then you put in your basic information, name, address, phone number, uh, email, and you put in a password. And then one of the coordinators from the time exchange will send you an email and say, let's get together for a cup of coffee. And I'll show you the, 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 the time exchange website. Uh, we'll have you sign a release form, and then we'll activate your membership. So you do that. You get together with somebody over, to, over at uh, a library or a coffee shop, and um, you tell them the basic idea, make sure they understand the principle of time exchange. And then uh, have them sign a release form, and then I go back as the coordinator, or whoever does the interviewing, goes back as the coordinator, goes back into the computer, and from the back door of the website, activates their membership. Now, that person can use that password that they put in, go to the website, and put up a profile, just like Facebook or you know all these other things. But they can also post offers and requests. And so, uh, when I go into the website, I'm looking for someone who can maybe give me some Spanish lessons. I can search for Spanish lessons and I'll see X number of people have mentioned Spanish in their profile or they have actually offered Spanish lessons. I'll click on the, the, uh, the links, I'll get to their offer, and it'll show me an, e an email address. I email them, I say, I'm looking for Spanish lessons, would you give me some help? And so we begin to talk and we negotiate and we say, okay, I'll come, I'll meet you at the library on Tuesday afternoon. Um, you meet, you have the exchange, and then either one, either the provider or the, or the receiver, can go back and post the offer, post the exchange um, on the website. So let's say I, I go and I get my Spanish lesson, um, I go back to the website and I post my hours and say, on this date, I was the receiver for a time exchange of one hour from so-and-so uh, for this category, this, this time exchange on this date. The computer, when I submit it, the computer automatically takes the hour out of my account and puts it in their account, and it sends them an email saying, so-and-so reported this hour was, was done. Uh, if you agree with it, you don't have to do anything. And that's all there is to it. So it's, it's, it's a little bit like a Craigslist of people that you are connected with here in the time exchange that are willing to help you or willing to uh, or looking for help from you. It gets uh, helps people connect to each other uh, and and provides them with opportunities to do. I'm going to call it helping. I don't like the word service because service sounds a little too formal. Mm -hmm. Helping is all it's about. It's people getting to each other, getting to know each other first of all, building trusting relationships, and finding opportunities to simply help each other just the way the old-fashioned community used to work before we got so isolated. <coughs> so that's the basic idea of the, of the time exchange. Um, and we're, uh, I could go on about the, some of the principles and so forth. I will say one of the most important ideas is that an hour in the time exchange is an hour no matter whose hour it is. So a lawyer's hour is the same as a housekeeper's hour, as a dish digger's hour, as a you know, tax accountant. Um, because of that, you can't really profit from the system, and as a result, the IRS doesn't tax it. It will tax bartering, but it won't tax, it doesn't tax time exchange, and there's actually been a number of legal decisions about that. And so time exchange is all about 
not about the money. It's about getting the work done without money and getting the work done that's the most important work, which is the work of keeping our communities up and running, taking care of our kids, watching our, our, our parents and our relatives and our friends, uh, keeping an eye on our houses and our neighborhoods and our streets. These are the kinds of things that nobody ever gets paid for, but we're all out there doing it, and nobody ever realizes how important that work is. Yeah, no, let, let me ask you this. Is, um, could you give, like, say you earned an hour for doing something for someone else. Could you donate that hour to folks? Could you donate that back to them or back to someone else? You can certainly transfer your hours to other members okay. and to organizations. Organizations can join the time exchange. Okay. We have uh, United Neighbors here in Fall River. The uh, United Way is a, is a member. Uh, we also have Allen's Pond out in Dartmouth, the, uh, the Audubon Sanctuary. They offer discounts on their courses in exchange for time credits. So you can get like 10 bucks off or something for contributing a time credit to them. You can donate your time credits to an organization so they can use those time credits to pay volunteers. So if you have volunteers that are members of the time exchange and you're having a hard time getting them to do a particular job, you can offer them the time credits for it. Okay? It doesn't mean you have to offer time credits for everything you, you do. Just it, think of it like cash in that respect. It's an extra incentive. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a neat system uh, when people just, when you just need to get people together. So uh, how many people are, uh, participate in this? Well, we have about 300 on the books. Okay. Um, there's not that many directly active, of course, as in most organizations. Um, but there's probably 50 to 100 who are, who, have ex who are exchanging. We have only been in existence for a year and a half. Okay. We started in December of 2012. Okay. And the, it was kind of interesting because this whole thing began as a grant um, requested by United Neighbors in Fall River, the Community Economic Development Center in New Bedford, and UMass Dartmouth Sustainability Office. The three agencies wrote the grant, and they got money to pay two VISTA volunteers for three years. Uh, in September of 2012, we, I came on board with uh, another VISTA. Uh, his name was Chris Demers, and he has since moved on to grad school. Uh, he stayed for the first year. I stayed on for a second year. Um, we came on in, in August. In four months, we had tabled at a number of places, had drafted our forms and policies, had set up the website and phone number, and had identified about 15 or 20 people that we thought might be interested in the time exchange. So we set up our organizational meeting on December 6th, invited about 17 people, everybody showed up, and everybody joined. Great. I was blown away. I, I, I really was. And so it's, that's how it started. And it gradually has grown mostly by people bringing their friends and word of mouth. And, and so it's the greater Fall River New Bedford area then? Is that where most of the folks are? The original grant was, was written with that in mind. Okay. Um, we actually have pockets of, of members in a couple of places. We actually have a pocket down the Cape and one in Brockton. Um, but the bulk of the members are uh, New Bedford, Dartmouth and Westport, and Fall River too. So what kind of, um, you kind of alluded to a couple of the services, but do you have a list of things, uh, a list of? Uh, I sure do. I that, have. That'd be great to know. There's uh, um, and people, th these are things that people have actually offered. I took them off the website. Um, things that they offer, everything from preserving foods, beekeeping, graphic design, sewing, tutoring Japanese, delivering meals, nature walks, yard work, marketing and media, resume writing, child care, decorating Hebrew, pet care, art lessons, cosmetology, firewood cutting, and even canning, freezing, drying, and windsurfing, too. Cool, cool. So I got, I got um, uh, a lesson in uh, boron playing, the uh, Irish drum. Okay. Uh, and I have cut firewood for people. I've split firewood. I've tutored a uh, fourth grader, and I've tutored a high school student. And um, recently, I got someone to cut some firewood for me. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. so, so anybody can participate, really. That's yeah. another very big principle. Yeah. Anybody can participate. In fact, it's central to the belief that everybody has something to offer. 
And so everybody can, even if you just talk on the phone to somebody, there are people who would love to just have conversations once in a while. And you can earn time credits by doing that and get other things that you need. That's great. So how, I mean, you know, I know you're on the show here and you're, you were saying you're going to go around to the other neighborhood groups. So you said, but most of your... Um, most of the people that have been joining, joining a word of mouth, is that? Um That's true. And, and one of the things that we're, we've been struggling with a little bit to get the word out is, I mean, we've, we've been in the paper a couple times. We've, we have monthly potlucks or some kind of a social gathering every month since we started. It's scattered. It's, we've, we've been to Fall River four or five times. Um, but we began to come to the conclusion that what we really think is is a good way to grow is to find groups of people who are already connected who are already helping each other out uh, and the neighborhood associations seem to me like a, a logical place to start yeah. so we're we're hoping I've had the opportunity to present uh, to a, a meeting um, once already uh, and I'm coming planning to come to see Carl's group and I hope that it will be able yeah. to have a chance to come and see your group at some yeah. point. Oh, that'd be great. That'd so be great. Um, <coughs> you, you know that um, our organizations are run by volunteers. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets paid no. from the board to the person that comes and picks up trash from the street. Nobody gets paid. Yeah. So if we join an organization like this I think it, we will benefit a lot because, <clears throat> and, and I'm going to just give an example. We purchase the school to do uh, <clears throat> to do a, a community center, so everybody that are working and giving their time to in any way <clears throat> help the organization and help the community center to to become a re reality being part of a program like that w they can benefit from something that they don't know what they don't know what to do but it's other people that can exchange that time so i i think that um we can uh we can it's a, it's a win-win situation we can learn a lot and we can win a lot there's great potential. <coughs> I, I was very interested when I heard you talking about the Duval School. Um, we have, the time exchange is, is organized. We have a, a, a board, so to speak. We actually call it a kitchen cabinet. Uh, and they, are all, they will be all volunteers. When my VISTA volunteer position finishes up in the summer, I plan to continue on the board. Um, it will become all volunteer, no budget at this point. Um, we do have a couple of projects. One project that we're, we're looking at is something called a repair cafe. And I was real excited when you talked about the Duval School because that might be a potentially perfect venue for it. A repair cafe is a gathering of people who can fix stuff. People that can fix toasters, can sew clothes, can help fix shoes, can sharpen knives, can fix lawnmowers, can fix bikes. You bring them together for a Saturday, you put them in a community center, and people bring stuff to get fixed. Mm -hmm. But you don't bring stuff and leave it. You come and the person shows you how to fix your stuff or you simply listen to them as they fix it and it becomes a relationship building. We're gonna have to have you come back, Bob. Yes. This is a, there's a lot to this, so <coughs> thanks a lot for coming. Well, thank you for the time, yeah, I really you, appreciate thank it. Thank you no again problem. and uh, we need to bring you back. Yeah. <laughs> have a good night. Thank you. Thanks a lot.